Hello my friend, this is Edouard. In today's video I'm going to talk about ABC analysis, why it's important, how to use it, especially in supply chain operations and logistics. And because the best way to learn is to practice, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial to do your first ABC analysis in Excel with 500 products in less than 10 minutes. All right, so before using Excel, I, I wanted to come back to what is exactly ABC analysis. So ABC analysis is coming from the 2080 rule. This is a really famous rule coming from Wilfredo Pareto. And basically this rule tells you that 80% of your results come from 20% of your causes. And you can apply this rule for basically almost everything in your life. So the first observation was with Wilfredo Pareto in Italy, and he observed that 80% of the loan was owned by 20% of the population. But you can also apply to your sales, so you will see that 80% of your sales are coming from 20% of your customers, 80% of your purchases are coming from 20% of your suppliers, 80% of your results are coming from 20% of your time. You will also find that you will spend 80% of your time with 20% of your friends and for the police you will find that 80% of the crimes are committed by 20% of the criminals. I like this example of the fridge. So you have products in your fridge you use every single day to make your food like for example milk, eggs or cheese, for sure for me will be a French baguette. I eat way too much bread, I need to reduce. So these products will be A, uh, a codes. Then you have products you use maybe a few times a week, like for example, like this kind of products, your yogurt, uh, dessert, orange. And you have products you only use a few times a month, only when you have a specific meal, like for example, the spicy sauce you're going to use only with Mexican food. So you can use this example of the fridge for every single part of your life in your company, in your personal life. And this is also one of the main reasons I founded ABC Supply Chain is because I was working in supply chain for the last 15 years and I know we don't have time. We are firefighting every single day and I really want to provide you the 20% of the knowledge that will give you 80% of the results to move from a foundation level to a professional expert and maybe a leader level if you want to become an entrepreneur like me. So ABC analysis is one of the foundation you need to master and how to use it basically in supply chain and operations. The first step will be to classify your products, your customers, your suppliers, your projects, your investments, and maybe your problems if you have too many problems. After the classification, you will have to focus your time. First of all, your time and your energy on what is really important for your business, your A products, your A customers, your A suppliers, your A projects, your A investments. You will have to focus on what is, what are the main risks, where do you want to invest the cash and the money, And basically you will have to invest the cash or what will give you the most results and revenue for your business and for your company. And in supply chain, we're going to focus especially in inventory management. You will need to invest on your most strategic products to make sure your customers have a good service rate and are happy to come back to buy your services and your products. And you also need to focus your communication on what is really important for the business. I've seen so many useless emails and meetings about non-significant products or like a shortage on C codes. And you really need to focus on what will make a big difference for your business. So if I come back to the ABC classification, for example, for products, you will have this kind of uh, distribution. This is a very uh, classic ones. And on one part, you have the number of items and on the other part, you have the volume. So we can use values or quantities. I'm going to explain that uh, in Excel just after. So you will find that when you do a classification, the curve is going vertical at the beginning with all the Eureka. So you have few products that represent a lot of volumes for your business. So A code, usually the classic one is 5% of your items represent 40% of your volumes. Then you have the B code. So basically when we say B code, we say A plus B will represent 20% of the items and 80% of the volumes. And then you have the C codes and you will see that the, the, the curve is going is getting flat. You have so many items in your company for sure that don't have any significant impact on your revenue. So this is why it's important to classify in three categories and then you will apply this to improve your service level, your inventory management and your focus for your business. So we're going to repeat this graph in Excel just after, but I just wanted to give you one specific example to understand how to use ABC uh, analysis. Uh, this is the like, like a fashion example that I've been working uh, for many years for the the textile and uh, sporting goods industry. And let's say, for example, uh, you, you work for Zara and you need to uh, prioritize your, your, your products. So you have a very basic shirt, like the black one, then you have the orange one, and then you have the fancy one. I can tell you for sure that the black shirt one will be the, your top seller. So it's for me, it's definitely an A code. Then the orange one is like more or less, so it's a B code. 
and the fancy one only few people on, on this planet will, will buy this kind of shirt so you, you only sell these products few times a few times a month maybe even a few times a year if you have a small shop the idea behind this classification is you definitely need to have close to 100 percent of service level for the for the black shirt it's almost impossible to reach 100 percent so i will say 99.5 then for the orange one it's important to have it but it's okay if you have some uh, shortage a uh, few times a year so i will target 90 percent of service level and for the the fancy uh, t-shirt i will just say okay when we have it it's great but if you don't have it it's not a big deal so i will only target 80 or maybe even less 70 percent hopefully we have a good margin because this product is probably not the most uh, profitable in terms of revenue so we need to have a good margin so this is the kind of strategy we can apply after implementing the abc analysis you have different group of products and for different group of products you will target different service level so i won't have time to dip into inventory management today but this is one of the main focus of abc supply chain so if you want to know more please check all my videos and tools uh, in the link below the, the video so now let's go into excel and start your first abc analysis you can download the Excel just uh, below the, the video and my challenge is to, to do it in less than 10 minutes. All right, so this is the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet. I love Excel and this is the best way to, to start and then you can implement in your ERP if you understand uh, the principles. Uh, we are using 552 products that represent 356 millions. Of course, you can use it for products but also for suppliers or customers. And the idea is first to, to get the data. It's always the most challenging part to get the right data. So in this specific example, I always recommend you to get all the products you have. So you have three kinds of products. You have the active ones that you are saying right now. You have the old ones, the discontinued ones. And also I really recommend you to include the new products that you are not selling today, but you may sell in the future. Why it's important, for example, if you check item three, we don't have any sales history. So you can see the blue part is all my sales history and the green part is my forecast. If we only use sales history, we won't focus on, for example, item three because item three is coming only in December. So I really recommend you, if possible, to include as well new products, old products, but also uh, the active products to make sure your IBS analysis will integrate all your portfolio. The second question you need to ask is, do I need to use quantity or values? And my answer is values. Why? Because uh, first of all, uh, if you have a business, the, the focus of a business most of the time is to increase your revenue and increase your profit. So I will always recommend to focus on value. Um, also, to give you another example, when I was doing uh, ABC analysis, uh, like for a retail company, we had this very, very small item that we like, for example, plastic bag or carton bags. And these, pr these products had no value. There was the, the value was maybe uh, less than a cent. And on the other part, we had products that we were selling, for example, bikes that were costing like 10,000 euros. And if you only use quantities, some of the time, if you have, for example, small accessories, you will only have cheap products for your A and B cost. So I always recommend value because value is quantity times price. You can use sales price if you're a retail company or FMCG, and you can use a cost price if you work for an industry. What is important is more to use always the same valuation, always cost price, always sales price when you do your IBC analysis. The third question is, should I use sales history or sales forecast? So in this specific example, I have the sales history for the last 12 months and I have forecast. To be honest with you, most of the companies on the planet don't have any forecast per item today. So it's okay if you don't have one, I recommend you to check all my videos regarding forecasting and forecasting accuracy. But uh, like in this specific example, I will combine these two. Why? Because I want to integrate my new products like the item three I was explaining before. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine sales history and sales forecast to uh, make my ABC analysis. The fourth question is, okay, which pair should I use for my ABC analysis? I will say that for 80 or 90% of the businesses, uh, we are using the last 12 months sales. So I will use this last 12 months here. But if you have like something very uh, seasonal, like the, the fashion industry, like in the fashion industry, I recommend to, to work per collection. So most of the time will be like you will have you will run an ABC analysis for for the next three months. Okay, so now we have our, our sales history, we have our sales forecast, we have the valuation, and we have all the items. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, for this one, I'm going to use 12 months, and for the 12 months, I'm going to mix between sales history and sales forecast. In this specific example, I'm quite confident with my forecast accuracy, so I'm going to use some sales history and some um, sales forecast three, three months history and uh, nine months forecast. 
you can decide for the mix. I would say that the less good is your forecast accuracy, the more you need to use your, your sales history. But in this case, I'm going to use three months. So I'm going to just do the sum and I will select last three months, then next nine months forecast. And in this case, I will include automatically uh, the new products, but also my sales history, my recent sales, uh, because sometimes your, your forecast is not good enough and it's good to, to balance between what happened in the past and what will happen in the future. So you press sum, then you can double click and then you have your 12 months column. So now we have this column, we're going to use this column for the ABC analysis just here. So the first thing you have to do, so we're going to use a pivot table. The pivot table is really important if you want to automate this process and don't do it every week or every month uh, uh, in a manual way. So what you're going to do before doing the, the pivot table, uh, best practice is just to select the first part of the table and you just go to insert and you just create a table. So this table, it's really important to do that because then it will automatically, if you have more data, it will automatically consider more data. If you have like more items coming, it will, in your pivot table, you will automatically include this new products and you won't have to change the selection. So then you just click whatever in the table, you press insert pivot table. You don't have to select all of it because we already created the table. So this is table two. I'm going to create a new worksheet. Okay. Then we have the item cost, item names, 12 months and ABC. So we're going to put item cost, item names. I want to see my values. I'm not using ABC because I want to create, I want to, to classify my products with this pivot table. Then I'm going to go to design. I'm going to remove all subtotal of tabular form. So we have this table now. I'm going to insert one colon on the left. Then I'm, I want to, I want to, the filter from the, the highest item to the lowest item in terms of revenue. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to more sort options, descending sum of the 12 months, 12 months. Okay. So now we can see that item one is the top seller, item two, item four, etc., etc. Okay. So we have uh, this pivot table. Now we're going to rank the product. So you just write rank. We're going to press one, two, and then you can just double click double click down and I really recommend you to drill down this formula until maybe 800 just in case if you have much more products you don't have to repeat this uh, operation so now we have this we have this uh, ranking for for your products so the next step I'm going to change this into USD the next step is to to find what is the total revenue so total revenue and number of items. So it's quite easy. You just put some, you can, I really recommend you to select the full column. That's why, but you have to be careful that you don't have the total. You have to remove the total of the pivot table. Then the number of item is count. So you can count 552. You can double check count is only counting numbers. So you have 552. That's correct. He's not counting my the text at the top. So we have the total revenue and the total number of items. So the next step is to classify the number of items. So I'm going to number of percentage of item equal. You just use the ranking divided by this total and you can press S4 to lock the formula. Then you convert into percentage and you drill down. Okay. So when you drill down, it's normal. The last the last product is 100%. So it's just to give you a, re a repetition of the products. The next one is the percentage of the revenue or the volumes. It's up to you how you want to call it. Um, and then basically what you're going to do, we're going to use the same. Uh, you see when you click on this, it's quite messy. So I recommend you to equal and just to tap the formula. So D4 manually, then you don't have this uh, fancy formula. You just divide the, the revenue by the total revenue and you press F4 to lock the formula again. Percentage. So if you do that and you drill down the formula, it's the percentage for each item, but we want the cumulative one. So what is the cumulative is basically for, for the second one, we're going to accumulate this one and this one for the third one, this one, this one, and this one. So leave the first one as it is. And for the second one, you just press plus the previous one. 
and doing that you will have a cumulative revenue and uh, volumes so we have the percentage of items we have the percentage of volumes and now we're going to classify our produce it's quite simple now you, we already have all the information we need and to do that we're going to create this little table so i'm a bit lazy so i'm going to copy and paste i'm going to cut j i'm going to remove these formulas and basically you have this table and this table will help you to classify. So ABC, we're gonna use revenue just to make it clear. All right, so if my revenue is less than 40%, then it's an A code. I'm gonna lock F4, this one and this one. So it's always better to have a parameter that you can change than just manually type the, the value. So if it's not less than 40%, you have another if revenue less than 80%, then B code. So we're gonna press F4 and F4. Then if it's not one of these two, we can just say like it's a C code. So we're gonna do this one, F4. Et voilà. So now we have our ABC classification and it's quite simple. You can see that from 40%, it's moving from A to B. You see, it's moving from A to B and then from B to C is moving at 80%. And then we, we can count how many items uh, do we have. So we're gonna use the count if formula, count if formula, this one. And what is my range, this one? What is my criteria? It's A. we can then pass the formula. So we just have one problem is like, because we uh, we, we gave more, more space for, for the table if we have more items coming, uh, all these products are basically empty and we, we don't have, it's, that's not really a C, C code. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna improve the formula. So we're gonna change this one. We're gonna remove C code and say, if my revenue, so D4 equal like blank, then we're gonna say, okay, let's put this this comma, and if not, that's a C code. And then here we have, we have 400 C code, we have 113 B code, and we have 39 code. So it's very important to have this information, and then what you can do is, you can just see the percentage. This divided by total of items, 7%, and this is how we do an ABC classification. Of course, we can add some colors here. Then we're gonna do the graphs. Just select the revenue, so just go down. You, you just have to be careful not to select all, all your products. We're gonna select all the revenue, insert, graph. So this is your distribution. Double, just double click to change the colors. We wanna see the number of items, so we're gonna select data. We're gonna edit the horizontal axe. just to have the same level. You press OK. So you, the percentage of item, you can call this one ABC and uh, this. You can also include this kind of shape. So I'm going, I'm going to copy and paste. OK, so we're going to move this one to 80%. So you're going to move this A here, B here and C here. Here we go, so we have the chart, we have the table, you can also include, this is a conditional formatting, you can just download my Excel if you want to see my conditional formatting to automatically uh, see uh, different colors for A, B and C. So now that you have your ABC uh, classification, you can use it to improve your inventory management and to focus your energy and time on what is really important. The last question is how should I update this table? If you have only a uh, sales history, just copy and paste your last 12 months history and this colon will be automatically uh, updated. You just have to refresh or save the file. You can also include sales and forecast. And the idea is always to use the same format from your ERP extraction to make sure you don't have to do any manipulation. Keep in mind that you should not move or change anything in this file. You should just copy and paste the data. And if you have any change, so I will give you one specific example. If for example, this product now is like, I will exaggerate 9999. Then you go back to your pivot table, the ABC analysis just here, and you just refresh, and you will see that the table will automatically change the, the classification 
uh, based on the data you have changed like forecast or, or sales history. So that's it for the, the ABC analysis. You see it's quite simple and when, it, when it's done, it's just you can just generate this report automatically. So the first step was to implement this ABC analysis and then you have to, to link it to your to your, your tools and ERP or whatever you're using to, to improve your forecasts and your inventory management. This is one of the example. I'm going to link the ABC analysis, then use it to automatically define my safety stock and uh, the, the level of risk I want to, to have for every uh, single product. And I also recommend you to include uh, this ABC analysis in your dashboards and reports. It's important to have something automatic, but also visual for your teams to always focus on the right products, the right suppliers, the right customers, and the right projects. So ABC analysis is one of the classic and foundation you should start using to focus your energy, time, and cash on the right products, customers, and suppliers. But this is not enough. If, for example, if I take these first two examples, item one and two, they have quite like almost the same volume of uh, revenue. But when we look at the behavior of the sales, we can see that one is very stable and predictable and the other one is not stable at all. And if you work in uh, supply chain and inventory management, you will definitely not, don't need the same safety stock for item one and item two. That's why after mastering the ABC analysis, I really recommend you to start integrating the uncertainty of your product. And we call that the XYZ analysis. I'm going to talk about this concept in my next videos. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is one of the foundations for your career and skills in supply chain. I use it every single day when I work, when I think. And if you want to see more videos, please feel free to comment first. If you have any questions, like, subscribe, because I'm going to share very soon new tools, methods, and Excel to boost your career and skills in supply chain. I see you very soon.